There are many fallen giant football clubs all around Europe. One that people speak about a lot at the moment is Schalke. What about East Stirlingshire in Scotland? We've made a video about them before, a big fall from grace. What about Everton? They've not won a trophy since 1995. Well, today's video is gonna be a really, really interesting one if you like your football history. Welcome to the shores of Lake Como here in Northern Italy. This region of Europe in footballing terms is best known for Juventus, AC Milan and Inter Milan. Between the three of those clubs they have the lion's share of Italian championships, they have 12 European Cups between them and more Cups, domestic Cups, than I can mention in this intro. And also just have a little look if we add Torino into the mix as well. Over 80 of the Italian leagues in this entirety of Italian football have been won by clubs within Turin, and Milan, Torino and Milano. Today's video is one that I've been meaning to make for a long time. I've known about today's football club for a while and I've always wanted to cover them. They currently play in the third tier and are from Vercelli. I will show you exactly where it is on a map. It's kind of in between Turin and Milan, two of the biggest cities in terms of football globally through some of the teams we just mentioned. And how many of you know about Italian football through Roma or Fiorentina or Napoli who recently won the league? Genoa have a great history as well. But the team we're going to be seeing today play in the third tier, so essentially League One, and they have been champions of Italy seven times. They've not won the league, the top league, since the 1920s, so yeah, about 100 years ago now. So it's a bit of a strange lake. Look, as you can see, an upside down Y, Lake Como. And this is where I'm staying, Lecco. Famous for Lake Como, famous for its beauty and peacefulness. Lecco, a city with ancient roots, combines architecture, elegant squares, and charming urban liveliness. Need a little bit of time off after a few videos that went wrong in the UK. So I'm staying in Lecco. Here's Como, and here's what you can do in Lake Como. It's a glacial lake, it all runs down from the mountains, and it's made this shape. So it must have like split down here in the past, and it's made this incredible lake. Um, but yeah, Lecco's there, and we've got to come down to somewhere. Like if the map extended to like here, maybe, is where, uh, where we'll be going to see the football match. Buongiorno. Good morning from my hotel. Here's the beauty of a car. A little bit close. Hang on. I've already um, been in Italy a few days, like I may have already said in this video, and uh, there's nothing more terrifying than driving in foreign countries, particularly if that foreign country is Italy with small windy roads here up in the north. But I'm hoping today's journey isn't too bad. We've got an hour and a half to get there. Been to Italy, done a few videos here before, but this club specifically, the video should be fascinating. So please, if you haven't already, hit that like button. Please do subscribe if you aren't already for more interesting football stories. Let me change my mirrors and let's get on the terrifying Italian roads. While the roads on a Saturday morning aren't too bad right now, let's hope they stay this way all the way to Vercelli, but just some of the views. I hope you can see that. Look at the old girl, what a beauty. I might have to get a V-dub when I get back home. Can't have any complaints about the drive except from the eight pound, no, eight euro 90 toll. What's that gonna be, about seven pound? Out of the old Revolut account. Literally for driving an hour and a half. Imagine if you had to pay 10 pound a drive, 20 pound every three hours you drive in the UK. That'd be uproar. Buongiorno, hello, how are you? Uh, yeah, I'm all good, mate. I just arrived. You're the man. Okay, thank you so much, mate. I'll send you a quick picture of just where my car's parked, just to just to double check, but I'm sure it's fine. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Bye. Yes, I've got press access today. It's currently just before one o'clock and kickoff today, even though it's a Saturday, isn't until 6.30 p.m. I don't know why it's such a late kickoff, but I mean, it gives me time to explore Vercelli before the game later and yeah I've got media access for today they've been really good I sent them an email and uh, they said to come and check them out here we go you'd think that's the cross of St George I don't think it has anything to do with St George if I remember my other videos that I've made in Lombardy before this is the 
flag of Lombardy, the region that we're in, I do believe, if my memory serves me correctly. But look at this. Does it strike you as a stadium that has been champions of their nation for seven years? 1892, which great football club was formed in 1892 in England. And look at this, champions seven times. See, I'm not making it up. This, what is an equivalent of a League One club now, has been champions of Italy seven times. I want to know what that says. Let's have a quick look. Oh, look at that. Here we are in the main square of Vercelli. When it comes to vibes, Italy really is up there with the best that I've ever visited in the world. And particularly, I've been to Monza before for a game, and here in Vercelli, there's not really, it doesn't feel like there's a huge amount of tourism here, which is both good and bad, I suppose, but you avoid any of the sort of tourist scams that you get in Milan or other big cities that I've been to around Europe. It's just like really peaceful and just really nice. Look at this, coming ground hopping in a place like this. Just man, there's a little market on today. So we'll see if we can get some scran and maybe some coffee around here in a bit. But there's only 50,000 people who live in Vercelli, Vercelli even now. So I guess back 100 years ago when they were winning league titles, there was even less people here. Um, but if you could just compare like this place, this is the main part of Vercelli, the main square. I've been to the main square in Milan, it is mobbed. So it's probably no surprise that as Milan industrialized and got bigger, over the last hundred years, their football teams got more successful and were able to attract more players. The same, I guess, with Turin, big city not far from here, Torino, where Torino are from, and Juventus as well. But yeah, this small little sort of city or province in between two huge cities somehow have won seven Scudettos. I want to travel in, uh, around the England of yeah. Scotland. You should definitely go to Scotland. Uh, yeah. see, uh, Do you support FC Pro Vercelli, the football team? Uh, 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 Do you support them? No, no, I don't like football. Okay. <laughs> How sad is it when you ask somebody about football and they go, oh, I don't really like football. Oh, it's tragic. The amount of conversations I've had with people who speak no English, yet you can just talk about footballers. Time to head to the ground, my first ever Media Pass in Italy. My name is Mattia, I'm the press officer and social media manager of Provercelli. How did you come to be the social media manager here at the club? Yeah, uh, this, this summer, this last summer in 2023, I found this job opportunity of Provercelli and I'm a big fan. I played here when I was young, mm -hmm. so I tried and uh, luckily they chose me and I started in July with the pre-season uh, uh, of, of the first team. And then I, seven months later, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm here. Must be really fun to work at the club that you support. Yes, always fun, uh, even when uh, the things are not so good uh, during the matches. But, uh, and speaking is... of the matches, who are you playing today? We are playing against uh, Gian Arminio. The In the first round of the championship, it was a crazy match. Uh, we were uh, down two times and then we won with three goals of our captain, Mattia Mustacchio. So, I hope to have the same yep. today. Hopefully we have a, a similar game. Um, but it's a beautiful stadium, as yeah. you can see through there. The capacity is... It's uh, like uh, 5,000 people. And you should get some, maybe 1,000 at the games, you say? We hope 1,000 more. Okay, But uh, we usually have these kind of numbers uh, during our derbies with uh, Alessandria and Novara. Okay. This year with Novara we had 3,000 cool. here. Nice. And Alessandria almost 2,000. And this season, I'm, I'm going to learn about the history soon, aren't I, from Alessandro? From Alessandro. And, but how is this season going? The season is going really well. We are in the sixth place right now, just because the results in the last, uh, last games were not uh, uh, friendly with us. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, last season was difficult. We, 
we were in relegation uh, zone until the last 10 minutes of the last match. Wow. Okay. So this year uh, it is really good. We are in the sixth place. We won uh, with uh, big uh, opponents like uh, Vicenza 1-0 here. So by now it is good. We hope to go to the playoff and then uh, let's see what happens. Hopefully Serie B next season. We hope. This is the tunnel? Yep. And that's the lion. Is that a part of the... The lion is our, uh, like, uh, our animal. No? Okay. The symbol of the club, yeah? This, yeah, exactly. You can see some lions uh, around here. This is the laundry. Okay. This is our warehouse. Come, come. Cheers, man. Oh, the kit room. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Simone. Hello, you Simone. Hold, you can see. Hold the jerseys here mm -hmm. for the training and for the matches. Cool. We print every jersey. Simone print every jersey from here. Important so, man. Simone fa tutto. Does Simone everything. does everything. I know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow, look at this. The tunnel will will be taking off. Yep. Uh, They'll bring it out. Until yeah. uh, almost here. Nice. Uh, for uh, for the entrance of the team. And the pitch you told me earlier is artificial, right? Yes, yes, yes. It is artificial. Nice. And that means that the team can train here. Yes. Every day the team the team and the uh, under 19 team train here every day. And you say that the Juventus youth. Yes, you team of youth it? and w uh, women played here. Oh, cool. uh, I think uh, Torino too. Uh, Torino FC played here with the youth team. Yep. So and another team uh, from the um, the other uh, the other group of the Serie C played here. That is a Sestri Levante. So it really benefits the club having a pitch like this because yes. you can rent it out and make money, right? Yes, and it is good because you don't need another. Uh, uh, pitch where to train. Yeah. The name of the stadium was Silvio Piola, and that's a big legend in Italian football. Yes. Right? He's the Serie A Serie leader of the goal scorer. Wow. Okay. Until uh, his last, the last season, I think it was uh, after the Second World War. So in the first forties. Wow. So Only. a long time ago. Yes. Did he win the World Cup then? He won the World Cup in 1938. Wow. So he won but the World Cup. He never won a Serie A title. But he played. Crazy. That's mad. But he played for Vercelli. He played for uh, Pro Vercelli, for uh, Novara, Lazio, and Juventus. But he never won a Serie A. Never won a Serie A. But he's got hundreds of goals. Yeah, crazy. Hello everyone, it's a great pleasure for me to speak with you about Provercelli football team. My name is Alessandro Alex Tacchini. I'm a reporter in Italian television, broadcasting, radio mm -hmm. and books reporter. And we are here in a place that probably wrote the history of football in Italy. I mean, we've just been talking for 20 minutes before we started recording about the history of football in Italy and Vercelli. What makes this club so amazing? Because obviously the league titles are up there and the Seven history titles. is just unbelievable. Seven yeah. titles in 15 years, unbelievable. For such a tiny place like Vercelli, it was and it is right now, mm -hmm. nowadays. And the legend uh, was that uh, these 11 players was, uh, they were students. They were playing also gym and uh, fencing. Fencing, so yeah. that's why the Provercelli team was so strengthened, very hard to, to be beaten mm -hmm. because before in Italy the, the soccer, the football was only technique exported by the English people from okay. Genova yep, yep. or English or England or Switzerland. So Milano, Juventus and Genoa won the titles before Provercelli. Yeah, a lot of um, football clubs in Europe were created by British people, Scotland, England, who came and you created set up the, the, football the, the football. Clubs. Yeah. You are the inventor. Of, We're very of proud in, in Britain to have, have too, that title. Too. But obviously too. you were telling me also about the president of the club back in those days and he was yes. linked with FIFA as well and he has an important role in the setting up of the World Cup as well. Yes, is that right? Yes, uh, The name is, uh, is what it, he was a lawyer yeah, Vercelli, from Vercelli, Luigi Bozzino mm -hmm. was the name. He was a close friend of Jury May that invented the, the FIFA World yep, Cup. Yep. But before inventing the cup, there were many man managers of Europe, uh, from Europe, all of Europe, that wanted to, they had a dream for this uh, trophy. Mm -hmm. 
The name, uh, their name was Hugo Meisle in Österreich, Henri Delaunay in France, Jurim in France, and Luigi Bozzino in Italy. That was the president of the Italian League uh, Federation. And he uh, was a close friend of Rime. That's why Rime put it in the vice presidency of FIFA. Am I right in saying that the World Cup winning team was made up of Vercelli players? Yes, four Italian and Vercelli, Pro Vercelli uh, players won a title. The, in the World, World Cup? Cup? Yes, wow, okay. in 1934 in Italy, Rome, uh, Virginio Rosetta from Juventus uh, and uh, Cavanna, Giuseppe Cavanna was the second goalkeeper. He, he never played what was uh, in, in the... On the, on the pitch, but he was on the yeah, bench. Yes, okay, cool. Yes. And Rosetta won eight Italian Scudettos, Italian titles, two with Provercelli and six with Juventus. Still now, he is the main winner of Italian titles with Giuseppe Furino and maybe um, another player. Okay, so a big player. legend. In 1938, Silvio Piola. And uh, Pietro Ferraris, mm -hmm. the second. Silvio Piola is on the... Yeah, yep. and we put a, a patch where Silvio Piola used to sit. Oh, wow, okay. Because yeah. Silvio Piola was from Vercelli, mm -hmm. was in love with Pro Vercelli. Yep. And uh, Pietro Ferraris was the, the wing, the, the um, left wing. Yep. You say Winger, wing? yeah, 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 left wing, okay. yeah, yeah, correct. You know, very, very great player. Yeah. Then he played with, with Torino, the great Torino. He didn't die in the tragedy of Superga of 1949 yeah. because he lived the, the club one year before. Okay. So it was very... That was the plain tragedy, right, yeah. with Torino. And um, is there any football club in Europe that has the history of Vercelli but has now sort of become a smaller team competing Probably in lower divisions? Probably Nottingham Forest. But even they're back in the Premier League now. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm very fond of... Mm, Nottingham Not, Forest. Yes. What's the last time that Pro Vercelli played top tier football? Uh, 1934, 30, 45, so it's a century ago. Yeah. Is the dream ever to get back? Could, could you see it happen? Yeah, yeah, but the Serie B, the second level, was reached um, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. We kept it for five years. It was a dream because for such a little city like Vercelli, but very beautiful from an arti artistic point of view, mm -hmm. let me say, only one thing, uh, that Liverpool FC wo won the English title in 1922 and uh, challenged many Italian clubs in the summer of 1922, mm -hmm. maybe spring, and uh, the only team not defeated by Liverpool was Provercelli, wow. nil-nil. They should organise a friendly today. Ah, oh, it would be a dream. I don't know if you have your ticket here, but maybe you can yeah. have the Silvio Piola seat. Oh, I don't know if I... Yeah, should sit in his yeah. seat. Ah, oh, okay. So that is where Silvio used to, used to sit. To sit. Okay. And so he's the top scorer in all of Italy. In, in the with the um, is the second top scorer with the Azzurra jersey. Yep. And he is the top scorer of Serie A of uh, all times. Cool. And that's who the stadium's named after. Yes. Is he, actually, it's not Provercelli. It's Italy. That's Italy. That's Italy with nine Provercelli players inside. Oh, so nine that says nine. Against oh. Belgium, one nil. Wow. The cross? This is the St. George cross. Oh, so it is the St. George Drawn cross. from, uh, with the permission of Genoa city, because it is the, the, the badge of Genoa. And as well of Milano. Lombardy? Lombardy. Not uh, Lombardy, Milano. Milano. But first of all of Genoa. And the Queen or the King of England uh, asked to Genoa City the permission oh, to okay. take it as the England label. We have a few hours before kickoff. We have uh, two hour, hours since now. And so, where are we going just now then? We are going to see one of the most beautiful uh, churches in okay. Italy named St. Andrew. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, that is amazing. Yes, totally, uh, you told me the name, um, un untouched mystery. Yeah, listed, listed, right? Yeah, listed okay. since 800 years. So they can never 
knock it down, no. touch it, redevelop. Then I take you in the... Even though it's just. old, it looks new. Because it looks it, modern. We, we maintain it. Yes. And so it in made, this region... It was made from uh, English people, French yep. people and nice. Italian people. So you've not just got us to thank for all the football clubs, but also the churches <laughs> yes, as well. of course. And in this region, you don't just speak Italian. No. There's also another language. What is yes. it? The Piemontese or Vercellese language. Uh, the difference, I can, if you want... Yeah, tell me I some words. What's the in difference? English and in Italian okay. and the same sentence in Piemontese. So, I'm so proud and happy to be here to talk with you, my friends. In, it, in Italiano, eh, eh, sono così felice e onorato di parlare con voi, ragazzi, amici. In Vercellese language is... Ma touch and... Così felice da parlare con te che proprio mi sono proprio contento. It's very different. It's totally different. Totally different. Quite French. Why is it different? Mm, I don't know. Because in Italy you drive 10 kilometers and the, the languages change. Mm -hmm. for, for instance, in Milano, we, noi parliamo così in italiano. In Venezia, eh, ple, uh, noi parliamo così se veneziano. In Emilia Romagna, mo, noi parliamo così tortellini. O in Fiorentina, via, si mangia la Fiorentina a Firenze. <laughs> oh, a Roma se parla così. Ui, io voglio a Napoli, parla così. In Sicily, noi siamo siciliani. In Sardegna, per favore, adesso guardate questa chiesa. It's all Italian. Completely different. Only the accent changes. Okay. Like Scottish people, Scottish. Irish people, Liverpool, Liverpool, Newcastle, London. Yeah. yeah. Knowing that uh, to build such a huge church, it took uh, ten years. He put a price. It he, he told, he put the French and English people to build the front part of mm -hmm. the church, and the Italian people to build the retro of the the back of the church. The Italian people were, were very uh, sad about that. How, how are you there? We are in Italy and you put it on the back. So they built the back maybe better than the, the front part. And is the light supposed to be coming through that? Did they build it so that the sun would...? Yes, probably. Okay. Because there is a g game of lights in, the, in, in all, mm -hmm. the, in every ancient church. So this is where we are? Yeah. This is Lombardy here? Yes, this is Lombardy. But we're not quite in Lombardy, we're just the Two other. Two kilometers far from Lombardy. And so what's this region called? Piemonte. Piemonte, oh, that's the language yes. that they speak. Right? In English, Piedmont, probably. Wow, look at this place. So it's almost match time. You might be able to hear the music behind me from the stadium. They closed the road before the game here in Vercelli, but just so cool going around there. Went to three different churches with Alessandro, Alex as the name would be in English, Alexander, Alessandro, it's the same name, uh, one's English, one's Italian. I've been walking around, people have been calling him Alex, so yeah, really cool to see his passion for his religion, but yeah, heading to the game now. There they are, Pro Vercelli, seven times Italian champions. Now playing in the third tier, which is about to kick off. There's the ultras behind the goal over there. Not only are they champions of Italy seven times, but they obviously, and we've heard about this earlier, they gave a lot of players to those early Italian World Cup wins as well. We've got a period of silence here. I've not eaten since breakfast in my hotel this morning. I can't imagine they do pies in Italian football, but they must do stadium pizza, yes. What? One and a coffee as well, please. Cafe? Coffee, espresso. Espresso would be great, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Here we go. What would you rather have at the football, a scotch pie or one of them? With the ultras there. 
and the seven times Italian champions in front of you. What a life, eh? Thank you for all the support. Look at that stand as well. I've not even told you this. That stand is listed. They can't even touch that. Just remember, in Italy, they don't f around when it comes to coffee. These things will keep you up for days. <laughs> points to anyone in the comments who can tell me which former Premier League streets won't forget footballer is the manager of FC Pro Vicelli. Vercelli are well ahead of the opposition team in the table but it's the away side that are having the best of it so far and that is the away end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight maybe away fans plus a couple of stewards. So yeah, look at this, seven times winners of Serie A from 1908 to 1922. So that entire period of football was almost dominated by this football club. I just come all the way to Italy, hired a car, driven down here, fueled myself a pizza and coffee to watch a nil nil? Quite possibly. <laughs> We have another Alessandro. Yes, I'm the marketing director of Provercelli. So what have you thought of the first half? Oh, today uh, the guys uh, were a bit... Uh, it's, it's a, it was a bit difficult today because uh, our uh, opponents were so strong, they attack a lot, but I'm pretty sure that in the second half uh, we can play better than the yep. first half. And the ultras make a good noise, don't they? There's not many of them. It's a small crowd, the, but they make a good atmosphere. Yeah, but the passion of our yeah. our fans and our ultras uh, is something that's very, very important and deep for Pro Vercelli and yeah. the city of Vercelli. And they must be very proud of the history of the club? Yes, they are. Um, our, uh, the Pro Vercelli is our fans. Our fans are the owners of yeah. Pro Vercelli. Nice. Just as I'm making my way back up to the stand, it is 1-0 to the away side. Look at that. Oh, absolute scenes, look at them. They're on a terrible run of form, the away side, but they've scored here. Just as I've finished my interview of Alessandro, I'm making my way back up to the stand. Pro Vercelli aren't happy about it. So the club um, gave me a little wristband and let me in hospitality at half time. And the scran in there was absolutely amazing. Wow, look at this old stand, this is class. This is, I go to a lot of football stadiums around the world and when you come to foreign stadiums, you don't always get the sort of British vibes with the ground, but this stand specifically really feels British. Look at that, a few poles of uncertainty. Those arches as well. Seven times Scudetto winners are currently losing to a team that's about 16th in the third tier of Italian football. I'm guided. For context, that is the table. Look at Pro Vercelli. They're in the playoff spots. Well, the, old, the old playoffs go down to 10th, which is cool. That must be exciting towards the end of the season. But yeah, look at Pro Vercelli there. And Gianna Erminio. They're 12 currently, but if you take off the three points, it's a live league table. Take off the three points, they'd be just above the relegation playoff spots. And this is the form of the away side, Gianna Emenio. And look, they've lost their last four. Then they drew one against Atlanta under-23s, and they lost the other two. They've not won a game since December, before Christmas, December the 23rd. And then I come to Pro Vasili, thinking that Vercelli will win fairly easily. But nope. They're losing at home. I'm a bad luck charm. Sorry, Pro Vercelli fans. Oh, a red card 
for Pro Vercelli and a penalty against them. Well, they'll definitely survive relegation if they keep playing like this between now and the end of the season. What a performance. I'm going to have to go and see them play next time I'm in Italy. Uncertainty, what's going on? No! I could get used to waking up to that view every day. Might have to move to Italy and start um, covering more Serie C games. I could title this video so many different things. Um, the listed stand could make it the Italian Ibrox. Obviously, Ibrox has a listed stand jumping on the Rangers algorithm there. Um, it could be the lower league Italian side that won the World Cup. They obviously produced a lot of players in the early days of international football that they gave to the Italian national team, did Pro Vercelli and the Italian national team, if you know your stuff, were very, very successful in the early to mid 1900s. What about the fact that they've won seven league titles, but they now play in League One? I'm not sure right now what the title of the video is going to be, something about maybe one of the world's biggest fallen giants or something like that, but I hope you've enjoyed me looking around this incredible football club that maybe you've never heard of before, particularly if you're from the UK or from Scotland, where most of you probably will be from. Um, if you're from Italy, you might have heard of them, um, but if not, like obviously Italy would be so dominated by fans of Inter, Milan and Juve that I guess the smaller teams fly under the radar and get forgotten about, but seven league titles, such great history about them. I do love these videos. Yes, yeah, the next day now, it's took me a few days to film this one um, in and around this area. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's a bit of a longer one. Um, I do really enjoy looking into the history of clubs that I've I don't know a huge amount about, I look at them online, but until I go there and see them and speak to the people, um, that's when I really, really find out about them. And I love to explore them through this channel. I've um, got such a huge passion in football and the history of football and the teams that have made the sport what it is today. We've got all these behemoths of teams, players on millions of pounds a month in wages, and it wouldn't be possible without the trendsetters like Pro Vercelli in Italy or Queen's Park in Scotland or Corinthians and Old Etonians in England. Let me know who I should cover next um, with this type of video, any fallen giants, any old clubs that were really historic that aren't maybe hitting the levels that they did in their early days. Let me know in the comments and I'll make sure I go there. Pro Vercelli fans, um, make sure you check out the Pro Vercelli YouTube channel as well. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Do also go and follow them and all of their socials. I'm waking up all the Italians here, but yeah, look at that. I'll leave you with a view. Wow. I'm going to leave my Italian playlist on screen plus a couple of other videos from different countries around the world. Please click on one to continue watching. Thank you so much. Grazie and arrivederci.